Hello gamers, this is Sai, and welcome back to Which Way Games. Now, why should you never underestimate the creatures of the deep? Oh, water tastes good, yes. Nub, nub. Ace Ventura never gets a break, and with that being said, let's go on with the video. Now, as I said in my previous video, when Echo the Dolphin graced the Sega Mega Drive, it was that combination of the story and the gameplay that really caught the attention of gamers. You're goddamn right. That mixture of time travel and science fiction made Echo the Dolphin a staple of the 16-bit console from Sega. And lucky for us gamers, a sequel soon followed. Nice. And like its predecessor, Echo the Dolphin Tides of Time also had a fantastic story, which I'll get onto in a moment. Get on with it. Yes, get on with it. Yeah! Okay, fine, I'll start it now. But for those of you that haven't checked out part one, I highly recommend you do. And for those that have, let's continue the adventure. With the Vortex Queen now defeated, Echo and his plot flee for their lives towards the safety of Earth. And eventually, Calm returns to the ocean, but only thanks to the heroic efforts of Echo the Dolphin. Despite this victory, Echo is still haunted by the disturbing images that he saw on Planet Vortex, as well as that encounter with pure evil. Oh my God! But with the deep blue sea now safe, Echo returns to a life of peace. A short time has passed, and Echo has been filling his days with exploration. However, while inside an underwater cavern, a massive earthquake causes an avalanche, which collides with Echo, rendering him unconscious. Upon his awakening, Echo feels different, somewhat weaker, and then he realizes he desperately needs air. Oh crap. Rushing to the surface, Echo manages to avoid drowning, and then comes to the conclusion that the powers of the asteroids are with him no more. Confused about this strange occurrence, Echo is informed about the death of the asteroid, and that once again, the ocean is in turmoil. <laughs> Echo is clearly shocked by this news, but is unable to mourn the loss for very long, as a mysterious yet familiar dolphin makes herself known. Excellent! With her unusually long fins, this female dolphin is called Trelia, and soon she reveals to Echo that she is his descendant from the future. Taken aback for a moment, Echo comes to his senses when Trilia requests that he returns back to the future with her to meet up with an old friend. Old friend! Old new friend! <laughs> Together the pair enter the rivers of time and shortly arriving in the future, Echo learns that the ocean is now connected to every water source on the planet via special waterways in the sky. <laughs> Neat. But the ocean isn't the only thing that's evolved over time. Dolphins of the future can now fly and have special psychic abilities. <gasps> Eventually, after exploring the oceans of the future, Echo comes face to face with his old friend the asteroid, who then explains to Echo about the repercussions of his actions in his own timeline. In his haste to rescue his pod, Echo caused the time stream to split, creating two separate timelines. One where Earth is peaceful and filled with tranquility, while the other is a dark and desolate mechanical world ruled by the Vortex. Learning that he is called the Stone that Split Time, Echo is told by the Asteroid of the Future that he must restore the Asteroid of the Past if he has any hope of reclaiming his lost powers. However, the Asteroid isn't quite done with Echo. It's revealed after his encounter with the Vortex Queen that she somehow managed to survive and made her way to Earth. What? 
Upon her arrival on the Blue Planet, she found the whereabouts of the asteroid and is solely responsible for its demise. No, God! She now resides in the deepest part of the ocean, recovering and plotting her revenge against Echo the Dolphin. With this startling news, Echo travels back to the present and begins his long journey of recovering the lost globes of the asteroid. And after many encounters with deadly threats of the ocean, the asteroid is almost fully complete, but is still unable to restore Echo's lost powers. It turns out that the final orbs of the asteroid have been taken to the dark future of the Vortex, and seeing as the Atlantean time machine can only go back to the past, Echo must find a new way to go back to the future. He said it! He said it! Swimming back across the open sea, Echo eventually arrives within a haven called Luna Bay, but soon discovers that this once peaceful playground is now empty and devoid of all life. Knowing that this all points to the vortex, Echo recalls that moment when his bay was emptied abruptly, when suddenly he is ambushed and dragged back to the dark future ruled by the vortex. Moments later, Echo finds himself dealing with a number of ferocious Vortex aliens, all hell-bent on devouring his flesh. However, Echo just manages to escape with his life, and as if guided by fate, he locates the final pieces of the asteroid within a device known as the Globe Holder. After destroying the mechanical machine of the future, Echo is then warped back to the present, where he then swims across the ocean back to the ancient being known as the asteroid. With the asteroid now restored to its former glory, the powers that Echo once wielded have returned, and together they summon all the remaining dolphins of the sea. What follows is an all-out war between Dolphin and Vortex, and as the battle continues, Echo slips away in search of the Vortex Queen. Swimming deeper into the darkness of the ocean, Echo soon discovers a new machine of the Vortex, and knowing that the Vortex Queen must be inside, Echo enters cautiously. After many twists and turns, as well as alien encounters, Echo finally comes face to face with the evil and grotesque Vortex Queen. The pair stare at each other for a moment, and what follows is a confrontation that can be felt within the ocean, with Echo emerging as the victor. With the defeat of the Vortex Queen, her brood soon succumb to the might of the dolphins, and as they celebrate, Echo travels back to the asteroid once again. You don't say. The asteroid instructs Echo to travel back to Atlantis to destroy the time machine and thus preventing the stream of time from ever being split again. Once again, after traversing the open waters of the sea, Echo reaches the depths of Atlantis, but is shocked by what he discovers inside the sunken city of legend. The Vortex Queen somehow survived her brush with death and is now rushing towards the time machine with evil intent. <laughs> she wishes to travel back to the past to escape Echo, but being a force of nature, he soon makes his presence known, which of course, sends a fear of panic throughout the Vortex Queen. <laughs> Fearing for her life, the Vortex Queen swims with all her might towards the time machine with Echo in hot pursuit. However, the Vortex Queen reaches his gateway to the past, and with an instant, she disappears back through time, leaving Echo in the present. However, upon reaching the past, the Vortex Queen realizes that she can't manipulate the creatures of that era, and thus has to become part of Earth's ecosystem. <laughs> Coming back to the present, Echo contemplates his next move. Does he destroy the time machine, trapping the Vortex Queen in the prehistoric era, or does he leave the means of time travel completely untouched? Torn between this decision, Echo finally comes to his senses and enters the time machine, activating it and disappearing into the rivers of time. The tales of Echo's bravery soon became legendary within the ocean, with many fables surrounding his sudden disappearance. But legend says that if you look towards the heavens, you just might see this hero of the deep. Anyway, come back next time where I take a look at my top 10 most violent games. But the question is, are you ready for the gore? Thank you so much for watching and see you next game.